Hi, it's Esther from The Trucking Scribe. Today we're going to work on some little envelopes, two-sided pockets. I got, I think I did six in total, so I don't, I don't show all that video. So I hope you enjoyed the, the video and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Thanks. Hi, it's Esther. So I checked my messages and I know I have more than this but Kitty and Rhonda Crewmaker I hope I'm saying your name right Miss Rhonda um thank you so much for being here and leaving a uh, comment and Kitty she left me this she said that she's going through a new Bible study right now and that her prompt for today was Isaiah 4110 fear thou not for I am with thee be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Now that's the King James Version. And her prompt is, how can you remind yourself that God is with you when you're afraid? That is a hard question. I really had to think about it. and I sat down and, and wrote this a little bit. And th there's... I know there's more, but these are just some two thoughts that I had. So, good question. Fear is, can get a hold of you, and it's hard to think of anything but that fear. So, like I said last Friday, the Lord's Prayer is something that just seems to come natural because I've said it so much in my life when there's been um, scary things or hard things or I just didn't know what to say to God. And I also put any other passage in the Bible because by doing this, your mind is occupied to some extent. So that helps get some of that anxiety and that fear off your mind. Because once that fear gets there and you're in a terrifying situation or even just a terrifying normal situation, it's, it's hard. Um, another thing I came up with is you can sing your favorite song. It talks of God and how you are his child and how he will protect you. Okay. And then last week, let me get this over here. We discussed Psalms 5. If you won't let me bring it. There it is. So this came to mind when I read Kitty's prompt um, of what do you do? So Spurgeon is actually, he did a, if you haven't been here, I read this some of this the other day. He wrote an exposition on Psalms 5. And he talks about the voice of my cry. So in another psalm, we find the expression, the voice of my weeping. Weeping has a voice, a melting, plaintive tone, an ear-piercing shrillness, which reaches the very heart of God. And crying hath the voice, a soul moving elegance coming from our hearts, it reaches God's heart. All oh, my brothers and sisters, sometimes we cannot put our prayers into words. Right there, that's that really just said, you know, sometimes we can't, we don't know what to say to God because we're so afraid or so hurt or whatever the situation we're in. To a loving father, his children's cries are music, and they have a magical influence which his heart cannot resist. My king and my God, observe carefully these little pronouns, my king and my God. So he's always your, your king and your God, no matter whether you're up high in the world and you're all happy or you're at your lowest point. They are the pith and marrow of the plea. Here is a grand argument. Why God should answer prayer, because he is our king and our God. We are not aliens to him. He is the king of our country. Kings are expected to hear the appeals of their own pe of his, their own people. We are not strangers to him. We are worshipers, and he is our God. Ours by covenant, by promise, by blood, by oath. So Spurgeon is, is saying that, you know, you don't even have to have words to talk to God in that fear. Um, see here, 
Isaiah is saying, don't fear anything because God's there. God's saying this. I am your God. I am your strength. I will be your help. And I will hold you up with my right hand. So that prompt just says that no matter what, we're scared and we, we just can't think straight when we get scared or, you know, that's the some of the worst times in our lives. But God's still here as your heart calling out to him. So just keep that in mind. And thank you, Kitty, for asking that question because I wasn't planning on doing Bible study today, but that really helped me for some reason I needed to hear it. So one other thing I wanted to show y'all real quick. I am working on a new design for a folio and it's home sweet home and there are patchwork houses in it. So I got two different covers with patchwork houses. Haven't printed them out yet. I just actually finished them a while ago. All of these little houses have little patchwork and the pockets and stuff. Some more pockets and ephemera. Comes with a lot of pockets in this kit. You got little bangles and more houses and some more. So these all are going to, this, this kit will be up probably in the next day or so. So today, I haven't really prepared anything. My brain's been 100 miles an hour somewhere else. But I went through, and I do have a video. I'm probably going to show this next week. My box of stuff that I have made. And I'll, so I did go through this box, and I thought, it's been a while since I made this. I don't know if you guys have seen it or not. I think I did it recently, but I can't remember. So I'm going to do it again today, just as a quick little reminder. So my pages are six by six. If you are like me, you have millions of six by six little scrapbook paper and you can't find it, you can take your 12 by 12 and cut it in fours. And that's what I did with this. This is from this collection. It just seems like it, it's saying fall to me. So what we're going to do... I did write this down, but I'm going to put it up on the screen. So we need to pick out which two we want. So we're going to do those two. And I think I'm going to do those two together. And maybe we will do one more. Those two. I've got some different ones. So we could do this in mass make too. So first, we're going to take the three top ones that we want, these three, and put those three together. And look at your direction, because you will have a direction of what, what this needs to be when you do it. So if you did this, this would come down and be upside down. Whereas this side wouldn't, but it's going to be covered up a lot. So... You could either do that, or you could do it this way, and then your bottom's going to fold up and be that way. So I think I'm going to go with this part. And that first one's at two. This is two. You know what? I can't measure today. Yeah, not two and a half. It's two there. And then it's three and a half. Where in the world did I get these measurements? Let me look again. So you have two. No, do this here. Two and a half, two inches. And then you need another score on this one here that's going to be at three and a half. So two and three and a half. Let's see how that works. I say I was going to do this one is do it this way. Yeah. So this is going to be my top. I need to 
to score this one at two, and I can't see my marks. I put washi tape on here so I can write on it, and then later on I can take it off like this. So I'm going to do these at two. Now these two don't really matter which direction. So I'm going to score them at two. So it's a beautiful day here. But I know we have a lot of friends and family down in Florida in front of this. They're down there right in the way of this hurricane that's coming in. One of the worst, well, it is the worst from what I'm hearing in 100 years. So I have family down there that are not going to be able to get out. But. Um, they're going to be in a safe place. And we're going to do three and a half. So while you're out or just sitting here like me, let's say a prayer for them. And I'll say one now. Dear Lord, be with all the people in the path of Milton, all the people that were in the path of Helene, because we still got a lot of people trying to get, get out of the, the first hurricane. And just bring all these people your, your strength and your love to know that you're there with them no matter what. Because that's another thing I, that probably was in my mind today was that all this is going on and these people are going to be terrified. Well, maybe that's why God said, why, why you God said, you know, this needs to be said again today. But thank you, Lord, for all you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. So, you know, we need to be saying prayers for them. There's a lot of people that need prayers. A lot of them we don't know about. And you don't have to know their names or know exactly what's going on. You might see something on Facebook where the person is asking you to pray for me. And they don't want to give you what. They're praying what they're asking for because it could be very personal. God knows what, what their problems are. So, you know, he, he already knows. So you don't have to have every little detail. So I'm thinking about making some of these to go in my shop. I have a few and I have sold a few. Um... I just don't want to make a lot of things and then wind up having stuff for years and years and years. But at the same time, I wonder, okay, well, what am I going to do, you know, if... This one goes this way. So I'm going to do a punch on this short side on this one. But... Okay. Yeah, I've been watching the news and been worrying about my family that's down there. Which, all we can do is leave them in God's hands. So it looks like I have another pool right there. So we will, let me see. I don't remember how I'm doing this now. Is that right? Yep, it is. So on this one, we're doing a pool on each side. I can do two at a time here. So I wonder if y'all know whether they can make little machines that cut these out and will do more than a couple at a time like these. I know there are corner rooms, but I have not looked to see if there are um you call that totally just lost in my mind if there's any that would cut these in in half or not in half but would cut that circle notch out so if you missed Monday's video I just have started talking about my two stores 
And I'm going to laminate these. I think I might do that later on today so, so they don't get all dirty. So the truck and scribe is the one that you guys have always been going to. I have my physical books and my digital kits in there. And there was a problem with a couple of customers. So I decided to keep my physical books, junk journals, things that you can hold in the truck and scribe. And I've changed over to Pixel Scribe Studio for the digitals. So you can go to both. I think I've tried to link them both together to let you know that too. It is down in my description, so you'll be able to find it and find a link. So what I did on this one is I did round this small flap up there. I'm just going to do these the same way. When, I like using the 7. Sometimes the 10 is good on certain things. So I've had this candle probably five years. I have these needles and I can never find them. I get them out of the lace things from Joann's and they work great for my glue. The other day I happened to see this and usually my phone's sitting up there if I'm not on, on here doing this. So I thought, why not I been putting that in there all this time like a little pin cushion? So what I'm going to do is I'm putting glue all the way up to that edge. And you could do it all the way down. I just prefer to do one at a time myself. You don't really need to worry about putting it on the bottom. Because it's, it'll stop down here. Okay, and then you just turn this over and you put some glue right here. I mean, these are really quick. And other than decorating, that one is, is pretty much done. I think I need to change little things, sponges. Mine is not working that much anymore. How often do y'all change yours? Okay, so this one's ready. You can sit it under something. If you have a little book or like that. Okay. Well, definitely this way. And you can start on either side you want. Just put glue right here on the edges. I have other envelopes too. I've been designing some to go in my shop for Christmas and stuff. It's there in my digital shop. Um, I like playing with envelopes because I love mail. I uh, can get mail all the time as long as it's not junk mail. You know? Now I'm kind of pushing this in a little bit so you got a little bit of area. I didn't do it with the other one. And it ain't gonna let me now. There's still room to get in there. Oh, and through the end of the month, I believe it is, I have my digitals on half price. So go there and check it out. I've got a lot of Christmas. I have Jesus and the Nativity. I have a rustic farm one. And I'm adding quite a bit right now because I have a little extra time. And I really do enjoy playing with them. I'm just an artistic person. Um, and some of them I had already. So they just didn't, I didn't do all of them at one time. I'm just moving some from one store to the other. Plus, at the same time, making some more. So that. That's how I'm going to fix that little issue right there. And to make it kind of go together, you could add more. Maybe. Probably should put that on first and then turn that. You know, I think I'm upside down. Mm. Okay. 
Yeah, that looks a little better. So with junk journaling, you can make these little mistakes and stuff. You take nothing to fix it. Just put something over it and keep designing. That's what I really enjoy about junk journaling is that it was not a precise, got to be every little centimeter matching. I think since this is ripped, I am going to put a piece through here. Probably won't matter. But while I have it out, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So if you are doing these like a mass make, I would do all your score lines for one one part of it. I have two fold, two piles. So I put all, I would do all these first, then all these, then I would cut these notches in on all the needed notches. Do that at the same time. Ink them if you're going to ink them, and then glue them together. So if you are doing craft fairs and stuff like that, definitely work in an assembly line kind of a, a thing, streamlining it. I'd be happy to kind of show you more if you're interested. It's not a problem. Okay. And this one is a little bit long because I didn't measure right, so I'm going to trim it down in a minute. Somebody is walking up here. I don't know if Chrissy's up here for some reason. So, me and Chrissy, we live in the same house. I have a two story house. Or split level, however you want to put it. And the basement is finished. So she lives down there. Has her own like little apartment thing going on. Works out good for me. And her. Because sometimes I need help doing my things. Or I'm not feeling good. And other times she needs help with James. Or she's not feeling good. And James, he's just... The whole house is James's house, I'll tell you. At least he thinks it is anyway. Which is okay. Look at Grandma's house. You know, Grandma's house is supposed to be Grandma's house, not anybody else's. So what you do is you line this paper up. So first you're going to start right here. Wherever you want it to kind of be the same. And you push. Then you can go either way, and I'll show you on another one. You move this over to where you can see, see how it just covers that up. And you just keep going. Now this may not come off quite right, that's okay too. Then you just go on the other side and you line up your hearts and stuff. So you could trim this off a little bit if you want. I'm just going to try and round it a little bit. Look at that. That gives it a beautiful thing. So I'm going to do some more. I know I've got more somewhere. I just don't know where. I'm going to try to keep those. You know what? I know we can find some. I got some mail everywhere. So what are we going to do with this one? I was liking this pretty good. I wonder if I put something like this. Yep. And do it straight. So if I were going to do mass making of these and try and get some done, I would have to have everything set out. 
in what order and what maybe start with one. So this one will be the base the the one I'm looking at. Now look at you, you gotta print on the other side. I like that better. So depending on if I make some more of these to go in the shop, we'll see. Right now I'm just trying to figure out what would be something that sells. So what I'm thinking about doing Velcro. Yeah, you know, like this, maybe just cut off this metro line or So it was already tore a little bit. I could put that across there, but I cut this part off and put it on here. I don't know that I like the longness of it. Let me cut it off and see what I think. Let's get on there. We'll see. And I got some more right there. We're going to stick on the other ones. And the question is how do I want to get these off without tearing them? Actually threw some stuff away yesterday just because I had so much and I was like, I can't stand it. Now I want to go back through my trash can, which is just right here. Put it on that side down. Yeah. Oh. If nothing else, if you have so many envelopes you can't do nothing with, keep the stamps. Because they just give them another dimension. And I love when they have the postmarks on them. Now I am one that loves mail. Especially when I'm getting from people I know and stuff like that. It's Something about it, I guess. Growing up in my age when there was no internet or nothing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put these up, and then I, as I use them in projects, I'll decorate them more. So thank you so much for stopping by, helping me these cute little envelopes and you got stamps on the back. If you're new here, it'd be great if you hit that subscribe button if you've been here a while and you're new. I would really appreciate a comment and let, so I can get to know, know you. Um, a lot of my subscribers leave me messages and that's how I've gotten to know who they are over the, the years. So I look forward to seeing your message and the like button. I will see you next time. Thank you.